to me, great photography is all about connection, building a bridge between the ones in the images and the ones who are seeing the images. That, to me, is, is, is the magic of photography. That's the power of photography. And um, the, the key word here is really empathy, that you, for a moment, for a split of a second, can imagine yourself as, as being um, the one uh, depicted in the image. This is a picture of myself when I was just a boy. Uh, my name is Mass Nissen. I work with the Danish Daily Politik and with Panos Pictures. And the first work I'm going to show you here today is a story I did on homophobia in Russia a few years ago. This is Kirill, you see here, with blood in his face after being attacked by some uh, militant homophobes in St. Petersburg, uh, Russia. So I did this work and I photographed these uh, new anti-gay laws. I photographed the violent attacks from, from the homophobes. Here you have a self-declared militant homophobe uh, who's, who caught a gay man and tortured him and, and just shared these video online. So it, so it was a really horrible thing that was going on. But at one point in my work, I really felt that I needed something deeper, something that we can all really connect to, the love, the basic love and desire for another person that I think, I hope that we can all connect to. So I met John and Alex, and uh, I was invited to the bedroom where I took this image that, as you might know, won the World Press Photo of the Year 2015. So the image traveled around the world, and I really understood that in a body of work, I don't I don't only need the hard images but also the soft images the images that um that we that we inspired by and uh, this is John and Alex kissing in front of the image as it was exhibited in in St Petersburg and here's another example of how we can make a small change to the world with our work this is a a young gay man who came out of the closet after seeing the image of John and Alex and on this Instagram picture, he's posing with a sign print I, I sent to him once I once I heard about his story. So that's what I've been trying to do, trying to show both sides of the coin. Like here, you have a man sick and dying from hunger in South Sudan. But on the other side, you have this man holding a baby. And it reminded me of my own daughter and how I missed her. That's why I actually took this picture. Here, this is for my work in Colombia on the Civil War. Uh, you have fields of, of marijuana, of co um, coca for cocaine production. And then you have this again, a young girl, um, Sara Manuela, two and a half year old, sleeping next to a gun. And obviously it also reminded me of my own um, kids when I, when I saw her. And here we have the Osorios at their family a cocaine laboratory in, in Colombia. And also here, I am trying to show the normality, the, re the image that we can relate to, even though we, are, we might be so far from each other. So this example here is, is a personal project I did on, on the Amazon. And again, what I'm trying to do is, is not to romanticize it or to blame people who are destroying the Amazon, but rather to look inwards and look at how I and, and we as human beings are, are treating one another and, and the nature. So I guess that what I'm trying to do is to find the image that really connects us, that despite our differences has something um, universal uh, within them. Um, maybe you cannot relate to a cat or a monkey, but in fact many people have come to me after seeing this image and started uh, talking about their own relationships. Like I'm the cat and, and he's the monkey or, or, or however it might be. So the next work I would like to show to you now is the work I did in Brazil last summer. And hopefully some of the things that we've been talking about so far makes, makes some sense now. As you might know, the situation was really, really bad. You had a president who in many ways neglected the whole problem and... and um, so like many other photographers, the first thing I did was going was to go to the cemeteries here in San Paulo and, and try to get a, an idea of the scale of this crisis. I went to the hospitals to, with the ambulances, again, to document um, the pain and the suffering of, of this, uh, the seriousness of this crisis. But as I tried to explain to you earlier, I was also looking for the other side, um, the yin and the yang. 
and uh, I heard about these elderly homes where people could finally get a hawk through a plastic curtain for the first time in five months. So I heard about it and I thought that this is amazing. This is, yeah, this is something magical, something that brings hope in the dark place, love, solidarity, humanity, all the right things, right? All the things we are, the motions we are looking for. Well, this is what I got. Uh, bad light, uh, bad play, <laughs> you know, I couldn't really move around, a horrible background. It wasn't good in any way. I think, you know, it's so frustrating sometimes. The emotions are just right in front of you, but you just cannot photograph it. So later I visited another elderly home, the Viva Bim. It's called just outside of uh, San Paolo. And again, the emotions were amazing here. People were so happy and, and joyful to, to finally get a hug. And thankfully the light was a little bit better. This is where I took this image of the nurse Adriana and the 85 year old woman in Rosa Lucia. So thank you for listening today. I hope um, you got the opportunity to feel some of that uh, connection and empathy that I've been talking about. And I also hope that, um, or let's not forget that these images are taken on a very dark background. In the case of Brazil, more than 300,000 people have died from COVID-19, very much due to the irresponsible President Bolsonaro. So uh, thank you everyone and uh, stay safe.